Okay, hey everybody. Um, this week, uh, I worked a little bit on a parser for syslog messages, and uh, part of this was because during some recent consulting, we uh, did a lot of work with syslog D, obviously, and uh, once I got into the, that code and kind of saw how the how it's using regexes to parse messages, it seemed a little messy and kind of hard to configure. And uh, one huge limitation of it is that you have to choose one regex that matches basically the initial header for your syslog messages, which makes it really difficult to use if you have a heterogeneous environment that's sending syslog ng forwarded messages and you know from different types of agents. So uh, I would I wanted to cr try to create a parser that could handle all different message types without having to be configured one particular way. And I wanted to help speed it up because uh, uh, you know the guys. The guys here from Cerner are dealing with a huge quantity of syslog messages. Uh, so any speed right now, the parsing of those messages into tokens and converting them into events is all happening on the OpenMS machine. So it takes a lot of CPU in that one central location to do that. Um, so I thought a make that faster. B possibly make that a refactorable component that we could move out to the minions. So at least they could be. The messages could be well tokenized before they're sent up to open in a mess. Um, so I had all these thoughts in my head about how to make a parser, and of course, as soon as I started Googling, I was not the first person on earth to envision this type of parser. Um, but uh, anyway, the parser we get we get messages from Camel uh, for Syslog basically in the form of a Java byte buffer. So it's nice, nice, fast little buffer with a cursor on it that you can move around to. Uh, figure out where you are in the in the uh, stream. So I thought, well, I need a parser where I can basically step through and at each point make decisions, make the most efficient decision about how to continue parsing. Um, so, and I've been working a lot with uh, completable futures in Java, which are like a, similarly, they're like a future construct where you can say, I've done a step, now I'm gonna do this step and this step and this step. So I thought, why not try to build a parser that way where it's just as, a set of futures basically built on each other and at the end of it hopefully you can pop an event out of that future. Um, so anyway I made a parser that uh, is composed of different stages and each stage of the parser is basically a future that decides whether or not it can continue or whether or not it's accumulated a value that it can be used to uh, uh, let's see I think I described it best in the uh, in the Java doc here, you can dynamically construct objects by adding handlers as each token is completed. So that's how it works. Um, and I've got little, I've got a Java API for it. Um, it's basically just like a big state machine that runs across the across the stream as it's uh, parsed. And then we came in here Monday, and Devin was like, "Hey, what about this Grok language the Logstash uses?" And I was like, "Oh, I haven't looked at that before, but..." It provides, one of the other requirements is I'd really like it to be easier to configure. Right now you have to be like a regex expert and some of the regexes, regexes aren't necessarily good at describing what the person was trying to match when they wrote the regex. <laughs> so I wanted a, I wanted a more, an easier way to define those patterns. So Grok is great for that, even though the Grok that Logstash uses is regex based. So it's kind of it's got a little bit of that ambiguity you can kind of name your fields but underneath they might be using kind of a complicated regex so anyway I created a uh, let's see I created basically a like a pared down grok to my parser parser that where's it at grok parser factory so you can take a grok expression and this thing will basically pop out one of my parsers based on the grok syntax. But it doesn't support full regex syntax. Um, but it does support, I think, enough to write, I'm thinking all possible syslog patterns you'd want to match. I'm sure that somebody will come up with a pattern that can't be handled easily. But uh, my answer for that is if you have a field that's very complicated that you know maybe you have a regex for, but would be hard to write a, a grok expression for that didn't support full regex. One of the cool things is at each stage you can basically just have Java code. So I'm thinking like the example is like IP addresses. If you wanted to handle v6, v4, scope, 
delimit all that other stuff that IP addresses can have. The, I know the regex for IPv6 is like 4K of regex. And, but you could write a Java class that was, you know, 50 lines long that parsed through tokens and accumulated them and figured out whether the address was valid. And it would be probably a lot faster than doing it with regex. So my idea is eventually they'll be like, right now I've got three types. I've got string, integer, and date, or actually string, integer, and month. But you could easily add an IP address matcher that could efficiently pull IP addresses out of tokens as well. So, let's see, let me give you an example of, I wrote a little unit test that runs all this, that, so here's an example, I pulled like a syslog ng forwarded message from Cisco. One thing that I thought would be cool in this whole thing too was, uh, the Cerner guys have tons of Cisco gear, and Cisco has a, an additional kind of message header that they prepend to their syslogs that has their own, uh, uh, facility priority and then a like a they call it a mnemonic which is basically like the subsystem of the whatever device it is so it's a really nice piece of metadata to have but none of our code right now could capture that uh, so I wanted to write the parser so that it could so anyway here's my sample message uh, so I wrote a the grok expression for this basically looks like this it's pretty readable so you've got like a delimiter and then they use percent curly brace as their token delimiter. So you're basically saying, here's a token and it's type integer and I wanna store it as this field value, like out of the parser. So each one of these will get converted into like basically a stage of my parser and then uh, it'll, be, it'll be emitted as like facility priority or month or day into a state that is associated with it that can be turned into an open NMS event at the end. So here's the grok expression. Like I said, I don't support regex. The only thing, so it's basically just a string of tokens and possible delimiters. Uh, like for instance here, process ID is basically an optional part of the process name usually in a syslog message. So instead of writing a regex that was like, you know, question, like bracket question mark and then a question mark around this capture here, you would, you would just write a second grok statement that omitted the, the process ID and then just leave it up to my parser to kind of optimize that, the parsing. Um, let's see. So anyway, right now I can only take one grok statement and convert it into one parser tree. So this is what the Java API for the parser looks like. So if you were writing it that way, it'd be a lot more work. But the grok, the grok parser basically emits this exact same thing. So then I had a test where I'm running it 100,000 times. Uh, the first loop is running against the one I'm creating in Java up here. And the second one is create is running it against the grok parser. And then the last one is using the old syslog decode, which was called convert to event, which does all the regexes and uh, and we're waiting. And then we do a get on the last future to wait for it to complete. So anyway, if we run that code, let's see. So here it's the new parser with no warm up is running in like 1.2 seconds. The grog version, basically the same 1.1 seconds. And yeah, it took like 8.1 for the old syslog code. So, and so yeah, it's this is kind of a best case scenario. There's some things I'm not doing in the new parsers, like actually creating like a Java date stamp for the event, which will take some time. Um, but actually, I think the Cerner guys did some optimizations and found that the Java 8 date uh, the new classes they added for date handling in Java 8 were actually much, much faster than using like Java util date. So I don't think it'll be like a massive amount of slowdown for, uh, to do things like that. So this is kind of a best case. I, but I hope the flexibility of handling, handling multiple patterns will, you know, and being easier to configure will outweigh, even if it takes the same amount of time, it should still, it will be much easier to configure. Um, so right now, one thing I need to add, which is how do we handle multiple patterns? Well, my idea would be, we basically have this parser factory and instead of just giving it a grok expression and asking for the one parser for that expression, 
you would kind of you would hand it a grok expression and say teach teach it this expression teach it another expression teach it another expression for all of your different uh, syslog formats and then uh, and then I was thinking well that's cool like if the first four tokens are the same then I only really have to execute that parse once and then I can branch out to the different variants and uh, of course you know computer scientists thought of this like decades ago and it's called a it's called a radix tree which uh, basically means that you collapse a tree of items into all their common parent components. So this is like a simple radix tree for these three words. So they all start with RO, so that's the first parent member. And then you have a, a, uh, a branch between S and OM for room. And then the S branches for the end of rows and Roskins. So that's the kind of data structure I'd like to have in it eventually and the cool part about this is is because it's laid out as completable futures this is just like a future tree you basically say like, do this future then do this and this and this one will cancel and then you say okay this one finished do this and this and then whichever ones don't match will cancel out and you'll eventually get to the bottom of the tree and have your open and a mess event so um, yeah that's the idea so hopefully it will be faster and I'll have an easy way to write grok expressions. It seems like the grok language is pretty, it's, it's pretty cool. Like uh, it should be, we won't be able to like cut and paste stuff directly from, you know, log stash or anything like that because they're using like a regex based grok parser. But um, yeah, it should be quicker and it should handle a lot more of the metadata. What, what I'm envisioning is like if you get to a, a field like this, like the, uh, Cis the Cisco mnemonics, you'll just, those will come into the event as an event param that's just defined right in your grok statement. So there'll be a list of standard fields for every event, but if you try to specify one that doesn't match one of the standard ones, it'll get just picked up as a param. There's, so. there's a whole document just go on their log format yeah. they don't even follow themselves. Really? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. They, they usually do. Yeah. There are exceptions I've found. I know that I did see a giant PDF at some point yeah. of, that listed all these mnemonics and there's yeah. hundreds of them. So, right. yeah, that that would be uh, that'd be cool to parse because at least, you know, it'd come in as a parameter and you, you could search for it in Elasticsearch, yeah. search for it in the UI, that kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll send some emails out to the dev list if I need somebody to need volunteers to dogpile on grok expressions for all of this stuff. So yeah, that's it. Does anybody have any questions? I've got some log stash versions of things that I've come up with for Cisco stuff. So you okay. Yeah. Cool. Let will at least give me an idea. Like right. this is all about like handling different possibilities. So as soon as you run across something you've never seen before, it might be possible that we have to write a little bit of Java code for you know some really strange formatted stuff. I mean, dates by themselves are a mess to handle in in uh, syslog messages in the first place, just because of locales and time zones and all that stuff. But even we use the proper log stash I mean, like to write the after coming from uh, getting the data from the Kafka cluster mm -hmm. and the output plug into the elastic, right? Okay. So whatever the logs I showed, I use the proper regular expression. Okay. So yeah, this should be hopefully really similar, and I hope hopefully the uh, the fact that it doesn't support regexes won't be in a too much of an issue. But um, it's possible we could support regex as well. It's just that that would, I think, slow down the parsing a lot. But there's nothing to say that you couldn't have a token that was composed of a regex statement. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Cool, thanks.